Hi, my name is Jim Well, and we're going to talk today a little bit about WPF and PowerShell and how to do IP entry boxes in several different ways, not just uh, entering the IP but also validating the IP as well. Um, this is my second run at this video. Um, I didn't like the first one, so I'm going to take that down and replace it for this one. So, uh, here we are in Visual Studio again. And we can see our regular three page wizard, which we've now altered to do three different types of uh, IP address. And we can see that on uh, page one, uh, down in the XAML, what we've got is we've got a text box. And surrounding that, we've got a border. Now you can see that the text box is inside. So now we've got a hierarchy. So we know that the text box is inside the the uh, the border in the XAML and <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to look at a certain event to drive the code in uh, in the text box and that is going to be let me just show you this is going to be the text changed event and we're going to rely on this to uh, essentially validate our uh, IP address entry so let's have a look at the code. Now we're going to use, as I say, we're going to use a regular expression to do this. Now regular expressions for IP addresses are quite hard. Uh, now we've got a great example here which was uh, taken, thankfully, thank you, uh, from the Sapien Power Regex product. And we see it's quite long and reasonably complicated. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the text change event. Now as we know just to add uh, an event to your PowerShell script then you need to do add underscore and then the event and then as soon as that uh, event happens then we'll run the code. So we'll set the regex up and then we'll try and match the text. Every time the text change we'll try and match it to that regex and if it does match then we'll set the borders to grey and if it doesn't match set the border to red. So let's see how that looks. Alright, so let's do a very simple IP address 1.1.1.1 1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 and the border's gone grey. Excellent, let's try it with something slightly more complicated. Again, looks good and I'm guessing if I go four numbers here dot one dot one, okay we're still good. Excellent. Um, <coughs> so this is all you need, surely. Well, there is a slight problem with this particular regex. Because if I do 1.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1, that's all fine. But if again I do 1.1.1, one .1 .1, then we see this isn't obviously a valid IP address, but we're coming up as if it is valid. So what's gone wrong here? Well, essentially this uh, nice regex is looking for a pattern, uh, IP address pattern within a line. So to make sure that it only recognizes uh, a single IP address and nothing else, we need to, to anchor it to the beginning and to the end. So uh, beginning is uh, carrot and end is dollar. So let's try this again. So now if we do 1.1.1.1, one 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 good, dot, ah, so now we've sorted out that little issue. Um, I've not managed to break this in way, so uh, it's probably uh, good enough to use. Um, there are a couple of issues with it, uh, this approach. One, it allows the user to enter in any letters or special characters. And it also tells you that you're doing something wrong before you've finished. It's not, not really the best guidance, but it's very simple. And if that's what you want, then I'm sure it will do very well. All right, so uh, let's go for another approach. So again, we've got a text box within a border. And <coughs> there's no change in terms of the XAML from uh, the previous one. What, it's, uh, what we're doing is we're, we're changing our approach slightly. So we're having a look at casting the text to an IP address. It effectively, we're asking the OS, is this a valid IP address, rather than making our own uh, regular expression. 
So we're going to try and change that IP address into an IP address object here. And if there is an exception, it's going to return false in this function. And if it succeeds, it's going to return true. <coughs> so essentially turning our test into a Boolean, which we can then use to change the border color to indicate whether we've got it right or wrong. So if we look at uh, this, then if we say our IP address is uh, incorrect, in this case it's 256.1.1.1, and then we try and cast that to an IP address, it fails, it causes an exception. Whereas if we put in the correct one, and we try and cast it to an IP address, excellent, it works. So instead of making a regex, we can just ask the OS to, uh, if, it's a, if it's a decent IP or not. That's all we're doing here. And <coughs> we're using this function in the uh, text changed event if test IP minus IP address. And we're taking the output of the text box. And if that succeeds, then gray. If it doesn't succeed, then red. All right. So let's have a look at the second page. So, <coughs> ah. Uh, you think that when we're testing, one on its own shouldn't be a valid IP address. But let's do, but one dot isn't. Hmm. So there's something going wrong here. Now, it goes wrong in a different way from the regex, because now if we extend it, it's not fine with that. Um, so let's drop back down to the command prompt and, and try and investigate why our code is going wrong. So if we have a look at 1.1 obviously not a valid IP address but we try to cast it to one that succeeds so the OS is actually converting it to 1.0.0.1 .0 .0 .1. I, I don't know why it's doing this so if you do know please let me know in the uh, in the comments so we need to do something additional here to make this approach work so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use another regex, but this time it's a m far, far simpler regex. So <coughs> saying any number of digits plus a literal dot or period, depending on where you are, and that in a four octet format. So then we're going to also check for both whether we can change that into um, an IP address or sorry, and that it matches that string. So we're going to take that regex, it uh, doesn't matter that it's after the um, event because remember this this event is only triggered when the text changes and the, this uh, script will have already run through to the end. So we're going to check that it matches the simple regex and that uh, the test IP uh, from the OS works as well. So let's now try this. So okay, so this is better. Perfect. Okay, now this works. So happy that that approach works as well. So now we've got two different methods, one using a very complicated regex and one using a simple regex and casting to IP address. Now it's all very good. But um, I'm wondering what Microsoft does. So if we have a look at um, effectively what Microsoft say you should be doing in terms of IP address, or rather what they've done. So we all know where the IP address boxes are in Windows, right? So this is interesting. So now we've got a lot more guidance than just a simple blank text box. We've got the space for the four octets. We've got dots in the correct place. What else have we got here? Well, <coughs> if we put our cursor there, it's in the middle of the text box and the numbers appear in the middle. So it's so it's uh, formatted center aligned on the text. I can't put in uh, anything apart from numbers. And if I hit dot, nothing happens, or period, nothing happens. But if I do one and then hit period, dot, our cursor moves on to the next octet. And also, if I do 
three numbers again the cursor moves on to the next object now if I do uh, one dot one dot one dot this time it doesn't move on to the, the next octet and then one last thing is the backspace so if I do backspace and now I do backspace as an empty octet it jumps to the previous one and deletes the last number so there's a fair bit of logic in these boxes to help you out when you're entering a, an IP address and I wondered if I could recreate this using PowerShell and WPF. Uh, Microsoft will also give a pop-up when you've entered a, an IP address that's out of range. So I've decided not to um, recreate the pop-up because I don't particularly like things stealing focus. Um, <coughs> uh, so again I'll turn the border red. So if we just uh, cancel out of this. And we'll have a look in our application to see how well we've done. So, we're creating the Microsoft IP address box. You see, we've got again the, the three dots, and the numbers are in the center. Excellent. If we do three numbers, it jumps to the next octet. If we do period, it doesn't. If we do one and then period, it does. And doesn't in the last one. If we do backspace, again it comes back through uh, the octet so we've pretty much replicated um, the uh, Microsoft IP address box it's apart from I'm turning the, the border red instead of doing a pop-up one other thing is that if I do two wrong entries and then take one of them away we're still red, right? So it's not just looking at that single octet and going, is that correct? It's looking at them all to see if it's correct. So let's have a look at the code. So let's just minimize uh, the previous set of code. Now, ah, we'll look in Visual Studio first, actually. So what we've got here, if we look in the XAML, is we've got seven text boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And four of those text boxes are the octets and three are the dots. And we can see the dots where the text is, in fact the dot focusable is false. We do not want to be able to tab to this text box. Okay. Or we do not be, want to be able to click on it. We also do not want to tab to it, so false. And we do not want it to, uh, anybody to be able to change it from a dot to anything else, so read only. Okay. So, the ones which are for data entry, now we can say max length is three, so we don't want any more than three numbers or letters here. Although nothing in the XAML is going to restrict it to just numbers. And text alignment is centered as it is for all the other text boxes. Now to make these look good, what we've done is we've put those inside a stack panel. So that all seven text boxes have a parent of a stack panel. And we've changed the orientation of that stack panel to horizontal from the default of vertical. And we've got the border at the very top, so the parent of a stack panel is the border which we're using to indicate whether that's a, a good IP address or, or a bad IP address. So certainly a little bit more complicated in XAML, and the logic behind is probably going to be more complicated as well. Now because we've got four text boxes now that we need to pay attention to instead of just one, we need to take account of the add text changed event in all four of these text boxes and not wanting to repeat code so I've set up a function within each of these events that I can call which takes as its parameter the automatic variable dollar underscore which uh, has all the details about the event so it contains all of the knowledge that uh, I need all the information I need to be able to uh, do the logic so let's have a look inside that function so we're just grabbing out octet as uh, the actual uh, text. And the first thing we're going to do is, if it doesn't match a dot or a number, 
We don't want to, to do anything. We don't want that uh, bad character to show up on screen. So <coughs> if the octet doesn't match a number or a period, then we're going to take that uh, character and we're going to replace that character with an empty string, i.e. nothing. And then this last part is changing the caret index or where the cursor is to 3, I, which will be the end of that octet. The reason uh, I'm doing that is because of this reason. So if you, if I did uh, a letter there, and without changing the caret index, it would actually jump the cursor to the beginning of the octet. And so <coughs> it wouldn't act very naturally or very intuitively to uh, the user. So we're jumping the, uh, the caret to the end. Now then, we want to uh, move that cursor to the next text box under certain conditions. And we want that those conditions to be if there is three numbers or if there is a number and a dot in that, uh, in that text box. So and we also don't want them to move out of the last. We don't want to jump to the cancel button or anything else if we're in the last octet of the IP address. We want to stay in the IP address box. So, as long as we're not in the last one, and although I've taken this as uh, from the name, so the name of the last text box is text box IP oct4, it may be better to just check for the last one in the tab index, but I've just used it name because I know what the names are going to be. So if you're going to reuse this code, be a little bit careful about your names, or I may uh, make, make some improvements in a, in a future version. So if it is like period, or the length is 3, and the length is greater than 1, the length is greater than 1 is to stop it jumping if there is a period and no number. Then we're going to try and move the cursor to the next text box. Now we're going to use do this by uh, effectively using this move focus method. Now the move fo focus method needs a traversal request as its object, and a traversal request needs a direction object. So we're going to set up the uh, direction object. Now it defaults to next, so we don't need to set that in this case. And then we're going to use that direction object um, as the tra in the traversal request, and then we're going to use the traversal request in the method to move the cursor along. So that is effectively changing. So we we can do three numbers, it, it moves. So we can do a number and a dot, and it moves, and not in the last octet. Now, because we have actually allowed a period. We haven't replaced it with nothing. I'm going to make sure that now we've done everything we need to with the period. We're going to now we're going to take that out of the text. Here we're just simply going to um, check if the uh, number is greater than two five five, and and we're going to turn the the border red in this case. Now, previously in the two examples, I've actually named explicitly the border that I want to change. But if I maybe want to reuse this IP en uh, entry box, say uh, for IP, DNS, default gateway, uh, subnet mask, etc., etc., then I don't want to. I mean, I could pass the border object in as the parameter to the function, or I could determine it automatically. So I decided to determine it automatically. So what we're going to do here is we're going to walk up the um, XAML tree from the text box. Now, the octet event which we pass through, the original source to that, we can get the parent, the original source of the text box, we get the parent of that, walk up the tree, and that will be our stack panel. Now we need to do that again to get to the border, and now we're going to change the border red, which is showing us like where well we've got 445, etc. All right. Now, <coughs> because we're testing the border color, we're um, actually going to walk up the uh, 
visual tree again because if we don't not long in the 255 we, I just want to find out what the current color of the border is now if it's less than 255 and the current color is red now that's the interesting thing when you're setting it you can set it using red gray black etc but when you're testing for it you need to know the correct code and the code for red is that now we can also look at children rather than parents so children equals stack panel children now this will give us all seven text boxes into this um, variable once we've got all seven we can say I will only want the ones where they have text in them or numbers in this case and the name has oct in them now uh, again probably something nicer to uh, enable people to name whatever te uh, the text box however they like would probably be to test for ones that don't have any text in them and aren't read only because all the uh, text the three text boxes with the display in the period are, are all read only so that might be another enhancement to make to uh, the script in the future if we've got more than one octets filled out we're then going to test if they're all greater than 255 if they are we're going to add a value to the total value and if the total value is greater than zero now we know that at least one of those octets has a value more than 255 and we're going to change that border brush to red else it's going to go to gray so every time we change a number it's going to test all four octets for whether they contain text and if that text is a number that's greater than 255 it'll be red else gray now then because we've messed about with the text from the original entry we now need to make sure that if it's not the same as original and we have in fact changed things then we'll change the display to what we want it to be i.e. what we've uh, edited it to be to taking out the letters special characters anything that's not a number taking out the, the uh, dots from being displayed and then again changing the carrot index as needed so that's almost everything apart from the backspace we haven't handled as yet the backspace jumping back and the reason why I split this out from uh, the function is to do with uh, something I'm planning to do in the next video which is uh, show you rooted events now I've mentioned rooted events a couple of times um, <coughs> now rooted events will uh, work for many events but it won't work for, for what I'm checking for here, which is preview key down. And I'll explain this a lot better in the, in the next video. So I'm handling this separately. So on each preview key down, if the key is backspaced and the cursor is at position zero all the way to the left, then I'm going to move the focus or tab to the previous text box. And I'm going to do this in two, three, and four. So I'm not in one. I'm not going to move to some other area of the UI if I hit backspace in there. I'm going to do a very similar uh, traversal request navigation that we did above with one small addition because as I mentioned the direction default is next we actually need to change this to do uh, previous so we can change the, uh, the, uh, focus, the focus navigation direction value to one and that will make it previous and then we add it to the traversal request and, and then again the move focus method is used good so that means that we have essentially managed to completely replicate uh, the Microsoft IP uh, address entry and you can mix and match any of these techniques that I've shown you within your own code for instance you know you can have a single text box but you can eliminate having letters uh, or anything apart from uh, numbers and dots in there which might be a nice addition to the simpler simpler methods or you can take uh, the uh, complete replication of the uh, Microsoft IP address boxes well uh, that's it from me for today uh, enjoy playing with your scripts and, and your GUIs have fun <laughs>